So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the internal rate of return and how you can think about it for a more complex kind of a project. Uh, in a previous video, we saw how the IRR can be computed for a very simple project which only generates cash flows for one year. But how about an investment prospect like this, where let's suppose uh, you have uh, this project which requires an upfront investment of $1,500 and then it's expected to give you 500 and then 600, 700 and then 800 over the next four years. If I ask you how would you compute the IRR of this project, well from a definitional standpoint, IRR is the discount rate that makes the NPV of the project equal to zero. This is something that uh, we sort of saw in a previous video for a simple project. So how would you approach or how would you use that definition for this more complex project? Well, the general way to represent NPV is this. This is generally for any discount rate K. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write NPV as a function of K where K is my symbol. Uh, for discount rate. This is my symbol for discount rate. And what we're saying here is that in this case, if you have an upfront investment of 1500 and then you're going to get 500, then do 500 divided by 1 plus K, where K could be any discount rate. It could be 10%, 5%, 15, 20, whatever. Uh, and then you have 600 divided by 1 plus K squared. And then you have 700 divided by 1 plus k cubed and then finally you have 800 divided by 1 plus k raised to the power 4. So this is how you would compute the NPV or uh, frame the problem using the NPV equation for any discount rate and now what we're saying is that look if you are trying to figure out that k which makes this entire equation equal to zero. If you do that, then by definition, that K is a very specific discount rate. That is the IRR of the project, right? So instead of this K, you have this IRR because by definition, IRR is that discount rate that makes the NPV of the project equal to zero. And so what that means is that you're saying negative 1500 plus uh, 500 divided by 1 plus IRR plus 600 divided by 1 plus IRR squared plus 700 divided by 1 plus IRR cubed and then finally 800 divided by 1 plus IRR raised to the power 4 all of this basically equates to 0 here you have one equation and one unknown variable which is IRR and so if you solve this equation for IRR well that would be the IRR the actual rate of return here's the problem as you can see this is not an easy problem to solve this requires a little bit of math in fact quite a bit of math uh, in fact IRR will be raised to the power 4 here and so you will need to do a bunch of rearranging in order to find out the actual value of IRR and so the problem is that this is hard to do by hand so you either need a financial calculator or you can use Microsoft Excel and uh, there, there are separate videos that I'll show you uh, which, which, which basically explain to you how you can do that but doing this by hand is a problem. The only way in which you can do this by hand is using something called the trial and error method in which you start plugging in different values of K and then see how the NPV responds and gradually for different values of K you see okay if I'm getting a positive NPV for a certain discount rate uh, then maybe I want to increase K so that NPV gets lower and lower and lower so you're, point, you're, you're trying to get the NPV to drop down to zero in fact what I'm going to do is uh, show you how I did this exercise and this is this is basically what I want to show you if you start plugging in different values of the discount rate you will get different values for NPV so for example let's suppose that you plugged in a discount rate of zero zero so basically what I'm saying to you over here is that look K is zero if you did that 
then as you can see, you're basically saying I'm not discounting any of my future cash flows. All right, so 500 and 600, that's 1100 plus another seven, that's 1800 and then 2600, right? So you can literally sum up all these numbers and then you're basically saying the value of my inflows is 2600, net out the initial investment of 1500, so the NPV would be 1100. That's positive. So you're like, you know, I want to drop the NPV a little bit more. So you say, okay, let me use a discount rate of 5%. So as you can see, as you are increasing the discount rate, naturally the NPV keeps on dropping and then dropping further with 10, 15, 20. Notice what happens right around here. When you use a discount rate of 20%, NPV is positive. And as soon as you use a discount rate of 25%, look, all of a sudden the NPV becomes negative. Now this is interesting because what you're saying is right here between 20 and 25%, you have a discount rate, which makes somewhere over here, which makes the NPV exactly equal to zero, right? And so that by definition, that discount rate by definition is the internal rate of return of the project. And so one thing that you can do is that you can try and see this graphically. So over here, uh, what I'm drawing is what is referred to as an NPV profile. That's just a fancy way of saying, look, just draw the graph of this. On the horizontal axis, measure the discount rate. On the vertical axis, measure the NPV that corresponds to those specific discount rates. So for 0% discount rate, your NPV is right around 1100. As you start increasing your discount rates, your NPV keeps on dropping, 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 dropping. And see right around here where this NPV profile is intersecting the horizontal axis. By definition, this is the point. This is that specific discount rate where the NPV is becoming equal to zero. This is your IRR. So put another way, wherever your NPV profile intersects the horizontal axis, which is this, this, this line right here, that is what your IRR is. That, that point by definition is your internal rate of return because it is that discount rate that is making NPV equal to zero. Now, unfortunately, uh, you can't see the exact value of it, but as you can see, it's very close to 25%. If In fact, if you'll uh, do the math, it will come out about 24.96% roughly. And again, you need to do this in Excel or the financial calculator to get this precise number. I'm going to show you some separate videos on that as to how you can do that. But this is the idea behind IRR calculation. So before we leave this video, I want you to understand something very, 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 very important. In fact, your instructor may choose to give you a multiple choice question of sorts around this, so pay attention. Look, uh, and I'm going to take you to the next slide. Uh, you must bear two important points with respect to IRR. One, you do not need to know what your discount rate or what your opportunity cost is to calculate IRR, right? What do I mean by that? When I gave you this investment prospect, I said, look, there's an investment which is going to require you to spend 1500 and then get five, six, seven, and 800 respectively. Did I tell you anything about the discount rate? What your opportunity cost of capital is? No, no. I simply said, you know, calculate the IRR of this investment. And you were like, yeah, okay, this is how I will frame the problem. And if you knew how to sort of do either this trial and error method that I did around here, or if you knew how to use Cal the calculator or Microsoft Excel, you could do that calculation. My point is you do not need to know your discount rate to calculate, to calculate IRR. However, however, let's suppose that you know now that your IRR is 24.96 or roughly 25%. The question is, should you make this investment? Should you invest in this project? Unfortunately, you cannot make that decision just by looking at the IRR. This is very important. So this is in fact my second point. You absolutely, you absolutely do need to know your discount rate if you wanna make a decision using the IRR. What that means is that if you know that your project is gonna yield you 25%, you don't know whether that's good or bad. The question that you're going to ask then is, 
what is the next best thing that I could have done with this $1,500 that I have to invest in this project. If the next best rate of return on an alternative investment of equal risk uh, is 30% or 35%, then does this investment make sense? No, 25% or 24.96% may seem high, but it's not high enough. It's not compensating you for your opportunity cost. And so the decision rule, how to make a decision based on IRR still requires that you compare your IRR with the discount rate K, which is your required rate of return, right? So this is your discount rate. And so, so very, very important. Uh, sometimes when you'll go into the industry, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see people, finance practitioners saying, oh, we love this project. You know, it has an IRR of 25%, 30%. If you know your finance, you'll be like, look, I understand the rate of return is 25%, 30%. What is the next best thing that we could have done? Don't tell me just 25 or 30 percent and then make a decision just based on that. You must, you must compare this number with your opportunity cost to make a good financial decision. So bear this in mind, IRR, while useful as a metric, only holds meaning when you are comparing it with your discount rate.